So a guy writes to me, he's a .NET and Angular developer, and he wants to get into freelance. So he starts investigating the freelance world, starts looking at the job opportunities. And uh, lo and behold, he sees that most of the jobs are PHP and WordPress. Now, if he had been watching Uncle Stuff's videos, that's me, he would have known that that's the reality of freelance development. So does that mean that you can't find freelance jobs with .NET and Angular? Well, you might be able to, but for every .NET Angular freelance gig, there's probably 10,000 WordPress or PHP gigs. And it's not that PHP and WordPress are better than .NET and Angular, it's just that we're looking at a type of business. When you are looking at small businesses, medium-sized businesses, you're looking at the freelance space. Most freelancers, most of the time, are going to find jobs, freelance jobs, working for small businesses. That's the fact of the matter. And small business tends to leverage WordPress a lot, PHP a lot, and that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Now, if you want to do .NET and Angular development, you're going to be working for medium to large size companies. Uh, they call it, uh, or what they call the enterprise. The enterprise is very large organizations. And very large organizations like that typically don't hire freelancers. They'll hire a contractor or full-time employee. A contractor is basically a temporary full-time employee. Now, if you're not sure what the distinction is, what the difference is between contract work versus freelance work, it comes down to this. When you're a contractor, you're just a temporary employee. It means you've got to follow certain uh, rules. You're usually slotted into an organization of other developers, and they're going to assign you a role, and they're going to tell you what task you have to do. It's pretty regimented, regimented as it would be if you worked for them full-time, except it's temporary. It could be three months, it could be one month, it could be a six-month contract, it could be a one-year contract. But you are a contractor. On the other hand, if you are a freelancer, you have a lot more freedom. So you typically, as a freelancer, you'll get a job and you'll have rough specifications. We use WordPress, Uncle Steph, so you should uh, update our WordPress installation or we need to update our shopping cart system, which is based on Stripe or it's based on PayPal. So you're gonna have these rough guidelines, if you will. Well, many times you won't have any guidelines. They say, we need a website. We need to put up a blog. We need to be able to sell products online. What should we do? So as a freelancer, you're going to have much more flexibility in terms of the tech that you're going to leverage. But again, typically it's going to be a lot of WordPress sites, uh, a lot of PHP work because there's just such, an infra such a big infrastructure there. One of the big differences as a freelancer, you set the terms in terms of when you work, how you work. When you're going to deliver, you know, you may decide, well, I can have this done in three weeks. I can have it done in two weeks. And you're going to work at home 100% of the time. You dictate all these terms. They cannot dictate to you how you work and when you're going to deliver. That's entirely your choice, your prerogative. And it's a different game. Whereas, again, as a contractor, and you're going to be basically a part-time or a temporary employee, rather. That's the difference. So is one better than the other? It really depends on the type of work that you like to do. Most of my career when I was building software for third parties, for other people, it was either free, it was mostly freelance. I did one or two contract jobs where it was short, two weeks, something like that. And it was pretty easy because when you are a contractor, typically you're responsible for just one thing. Whereas when you are a freelancer, typically you're responsible for the whole thing. So there's pros and cons to everything. So anyway, going back to the uh, original point of this video, .NET Angular, not too many freelance jobs, probably contract work out there, but understand contract work means medium to large organizations. Uh, basically, you are a temporary employee. So if you want to do .NET and Angular, that's where you are going to go. If you want to be pure freelance, have the advantages and the scalability of freelancing, when I say scalability, meaning how much money you could ultimately make, as a freelancer, it could be a lot more than as a contractor because uh, you, can, you have a lot more control over the process, much more control over the bidding. Uh, you can really set it up where you're making two, three, four 
$100 an hour or more if you know what you're doing. But that takes time. That takes time. If you're a noob and you're just doing HTML and CSS, chances are you're going to have to start out making less. But as you build up your skills, as you build up workflows, as you learn to negotiate properly, how to position contracts and so forth, then you can start making that big money. But it takes a little bit more time. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in the ways of code. You can check me out at UncleSteph.com or you can buy some individual courses, interactive courses, very different from anybody else, anybody else out there at the uh, links are below this video. If you have any questions about whatever it, whatever it is I spoke about in this video, uh, feel free to uh, ask.